Alright, the Six Gun Guitars is still in the electric bass series. Um, right now I've already taken the fretboard and I've put the taper on it. So what I want to do now is come back and do some inlays. Uh, what I've selected for the inlays is I'm going to do 3 8 inch um, little plugs that I cut out of Padoop. So basically little Padoop dots that are going to go all the way up and down the fretboard. Uh, I've got them laid out here and I'll show you in a second, but essentially what I did was I took the plug cutter, just a piece of Padoop, and I mounted it in the drill truck and the drill press and I just went down a whole bunch of times and I dug out probably 1 8 inch plugs out of there. Once I had a whole bunch of them kind of dug in, I flipped it up and ran it through the bandsaw and let all those plugs fall out. And so I picked them all up and they're only about, they're about an eighth of an inch thick, maybe just a little bit over in some situations. Um, but what that did was it just allows the plug cutter, the plug cutter allows you to pick any type of wood that you want. So you can take Paduke, you can do Purple Heart, you can do Bacote, you can do any type of species that you want and put any type of fret dots you want as long as you have a plug cutter. They come in a number of sizes. I think the smallest I've ever seen is a quarter of an inch, um, but they go up, you know, way bigger than we'd ever need for guitar making. But you can pick one up at a Home Depot, you can pick one up at a, a store like Woodcraft, and they're going to have those things for you. So, But anyway, now that I have all these plugs already, I've made a ton of them from a bunch of scrap wood, and I just kind of keep them in a little tray, so anytime I need it, I can just go over and pull them out. But what I'll do is I'll take you over the bench, and I'll show you how we measure this up. And the procedure is pretty easy. We're just going to measure the center, and I'll show you how to find that. And then we're going to take a quarter inch Forstner bit on the drill press, and we're going to punch out these holes and then inlay the dots. All right, we're in really, really tight here, um, so I'm just going to try to do this kind of quick enough so that way you can see it. But this is the fretboard, and we're going to go ahead and take this dot, and I'm going to show you how to find the center here. What you're going to do is you're going to want to draw an X that connects those two fret lines. So we're going to start at the far corner of this one, and then line up the other corner on this one, and get them as close as you can to perfect. And then you want to come in with your pencil and just put a little mark right in the middle. Then you want to go this way where we line these guys up again just corner to corner and then come that way. And That's going to give us a little X that may or may not be easy to see. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the center of that X and that coupled with a Forstner bit that has a nice point in the center so we'll really get that center really good and not worry about the bit walking on us you can use a Forstner bit or you can use a brad point drill bit. Brad points have the same thing, they've got a little point right in the center. So you can start digging it in and it's going to keep you going straight whereas a regular twist bit will kind of walk on you sometimes. So what I'm going to keep doing is I'm going to keep making these X's all up and down the fretboard wherever I want my dots just by doing the same thing, just making an X between the two lines and putting my dot right where I want it. And once I've got all these marked up, we'll go over to the drill press and we'll start drilling them out. Alright, this might be a little bit hard to see. Um, but I went ahead and chucked a 3 8 inch Forstner bit into the drill press here and I'm going to come through and I'm going to start cutting my holes. Now I've been saying 3 8 I've been saying a quarter, you know, throwing out a lot of different sizes here. Whatever size plug you cut is the size hole you need to make. That's a really, really easy way to make, you know, to make sure you got the right thing. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to bring it over to one of my X's. I'm going to rotate this so I can see the point. And then I'm going to come down and make me a little divot right in the center of the point there. Um, you can do this beforehand with it all. You know, that's fine too, which is this works out pretty well for me. So once I've found my hole and I'm happy with it, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and drill down a little over a sixteenth of an inch to make enough room for the inlay. test fit, alright, fits in there, fits in there really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed all the way down the rest of the fretboard um, in the exact same manner, drilling all the holes, and when we get to the end we'll bring it back over to the workbench and we'll go ahead and start gluing them in. Alright, so we're over at the bench, we've got all the holes dug in here. Um, this is the relatively easy part. All you're going to do is take one of the plugs that you cut, you know, which again just you know, kind of look like that, take one of the plugs that you cut, Take a look for the grain orientation because um, that's going to make a difference in how the fretboard looks in the end. So I want to run the grain the same way as my fretboard. 
So what I'm going to wind up doing is making sure, making sure the holes are nice and clear. And I'll come in with just a little tight bond. Um, some folks will use CA for this. Um, I really don't mind. It's wood. So I mean, we're going to use. I'm going to use tight bond. It's what I use for all the other wood stuff. So what I'll normally do is I'll put a little dollop in the middle, and then just give it a little smear, kind of out, so it coats the edges really good. Um, try not to get very much on the fretboard itself, otherwise you'll be cleaning it and doing more sanding than necessary. So I'll take the piece, making sure my grain orientation is good, and go ahead and... Oh, damn it, lost the grain orientation on that one now, but actually I still got it. So, go ahead and put it in, and give it a little press. And you see glue squeezing out all around it. And again, you can wipe off some of the bigger globs, but it leave a good chunk of it all around the piece like that. So that way any voids that are in there, um, if there are any voids, which there really shouldn't be, but if there are, they'll get filled with glue. So we just do the exact same thing again here. Go ahead and put a little dollop of glue. Careful not to get anywhere it doesn't belong. Go ahead and spread it out so that way, especially so that way it's touching the walls of the hole. So get that all done. Take a look at my grain orientation. Make sure that that's the way that I want it to be. And press fit the next one. This one didn't come up with as much glue. So I'm going to kind of make a note of that and use a little bit more glue on the next one here. So that way it can all get through. So again, Little dollop of glue. Check the grain. And spread spread the glue out. And pop it into the hole here. Give it a good push. Make sure it's in there well. And that looks good. Alright, I'm not going to bore you and do the entire thing. I'm just going to work through the rest of this off here. And once we're done with that, uh, we'll come back and go on to the next step.